Hello, it's me again. A little while ago, you saw me get this lovely acorn atom, uh, which Richard donated to the channel. And I haven't been able to do anything with it yet. There's a lot going on. But um, somebody else that saw that video on my second channel of me unboxing that, um, decided to uh, reach out and offer me some advice on the power issue with it. Something I didn't go into on this is that Richard had already done the modification to change this to five volt input. Uh, normally it would be like a normal um, nine volt power supply, which would be uh, voltage regulated down to five volts for all the logic circuits. But Richard's, uh, there's some jumpers in there that you can uh, uh, that you can jump. And Richard has done that modification. So that means that this only needs a five volt power supply. So it's a bit dangerous to plug in a nine volt power supply. I haven't plugged anything into it yet. I might do that today, but I got a package and it's not from what it appears to be the uh, retro Illuminati. This, <laughs> I love this box. Um, this is from Dave. This is from Dave Harris. And actually let's get it, let's get it out of the box. Here's the package. I'm keeping that box. That's de dead useful. I've, um, Got names and addresses on the other side, so I've actually already pre-folded this, so we haven't got anything that's going to dox anybody. Uh, he says, hi Lee, enclosed an Atom to HDMI built and tested along with a Pi and programmed SD card. The CPLD is also programmed and the modifications on the board bodge wires are to allow in situation programming of the CPLD. This can be updated if required from the RGB to HDMI menu as per the GitHub pages. Uh, oh, then this is the GitHub. Hoglet obviously is the, the person that created RGB to HDMI. Um, one of the, the most amazing modifications in retro hardware there is. Uh, and specifically, this is the um, uh, RGB to HDMI wiki assembly notes for the Atom board. I really enjoy the Atom. It's one of the first systems I got to repair uh, working for an Ac Ac Acorn service center in the 80s. Oh, wow. Uh, the system I wish I had kept hold of, I broke it for spares, was an Acorn System 5. Basically a BBC Micro prototype in a 19 inch rat case. Wow, I've, <laughs> I've heard some horror stories about things that people have um, let go over the years. Um, a falcon in a skip springs to mind, you know who you are. <laughs> uh, I have some further spares and keyboard bits for the atom shout if you need anything dave thank you dave let's have a quick look at this then oh we've got instructions in here as well i've not gone this deep into the package so far and the atom memory map oh so, oh nice expanding the atom that's instructions for modifying your acorn atom video graphics extension more graphics ram can be added Increasing the resolution, the screen resolution, allowing the use of higher graphics modes. These modes are described in the book Atomic Theory and Practice. What's the book I got? Uh, whoa! <laughs> it's in this book. <laughs> what are the chances of that? And they each require different amounts of video RAM provided by fitting pairs of 2114Ls as follows. IC42 and 43 is one kilobyte, and IC40 to 43 would be two kilobytes, 38 to 43 would be three kilobytes, 32 to 43 would be six kilobytes. If only ICs 42 and 43 are in use, the fitting, the fitting of IC30 is optional. When IC30 is not present, a wire link LK1 on side two must be soldered on the circuit board. IC30 is a uh, 74LS138 in a 16 pin socket and when it is fitted, the wire link must be cut or removed. IC32 to 41 may then be added. Well, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's have a quick look at the rest. We've got a lovely schematic. I do like a schematic. I'd had planned because I've got um, over on my wall here. I'll take a picture is a, a schematic that Yawning Angel Keith sent me um, for the BBC Micro. And I really like that it fits perfectly in an A3 frame. And I'd love to do that more. I would have liked to have had that all over my walls, but obviously there are other considerations of things that need to go on my walls. But uh, yeah, this is, uh, 
This is a nice schematic. Ooh, got some more here. All right, so the Atom MC3TH by Charlie Robinson. Ooh. Let's have a look and see what we've got. <clears throat> very well packaged, well done. So it's included the Raspberry Pi as well. That's very generous, thank you. I don't want to rip any components off. Okay, so this, uh, there's a, a 10 pin header uh, there on the back of this board that this connects to, to give us a HDMI output. Um, so this should just be ready to go. Atomic video to HDMI by Hoglet, 2019. It's weird that that's five years ago. And these are obviously the um, modification wires for programming the CPLD in situ. This kind of board has come on a lot um, in recent times. You see everything's getting so much smaller. And uh, I'm sure that um, I, I take that these are level shifters. I can't see the numbers on them. It would be surface mounted now. LM319s. So LM319 is um, it's a comparator, high speed dual comparators. Uh, precision high speed dual comparators designed to operate over a wide range of supply voltages down to a single 5 volt logic supply and ground. I don't know enough about electronics to, um, to give uh, a detailed comment on that. I just uh, put the electric in and the magic comes out at the other end. Right, so I think, I think the first thing I need to do, put that to one side, put my amazing book to one side, open this up. So I haven't got, uh, I haven't got composite out on this. I've got UHF, I could, I could plug it into UHF and, and show and do it on this telly. That, that's not the worst idea. I would like to see if it's actually, if there is life in it, and where it might want this power supply plugged in, because that, I don't, yeah, that's not big enough. Uh, that's unfortunate. Right, so yeah, from the, um, the outside connection to here, is ground so it is sent a positive no it's a smaller barrel jack why why is that on there <laughs> that's annoying <laughs> be nice to keep the original um yeah i'm not going to butcher this so i'm going to park this video for now and i'll come back to it after i've ordered uh the the right size to go into this barrel jack and I can make up a, a lead to go with my bench power supply and maybe even a, a whole power supply to go with it. <clears throat> so I'm just going to put this away for now. I had a thought, this is in my, I've got my box of bits and pieces here of these power jacks and this one's in there and it's got, I read on a black wire attached to it. Well, I can just solder these to here and have this hanging out the back. No reason I can't do that. Just gonna add some fresh solder to these points here because it's a bit crusty. Perfect. Right, so now I can feed power into this. Let's turn it upside down so I can get to the chips. Center positive, five volts. I'm gonna give it 700 milliamps first. That's current limiting. Let's give it an amp. I'm gonna tell on that side. This is um, just where I've soldered, so that's the only reason. I think that's the only reason that's hot there. This bit, yeah, that's the only reason that's still hot. Yep, 
nothing's lighting up. I'm going to give it more amps. Right, it's at 1.5 amps and it's still current limiting. I really don't like the way they've got the screws in between these terminals. I'm going to look up the specs for an Atom power supply, see what uh, the current should be. Okay, I've, um, I've looked it up and apparently uh, it will need more power. So I've increased my bench power supply to just you. I've increased my bench power supply to two amps and I'm going to press on now. And yeah, it's not current limiting anymore and it's drawing 1.66 amps, uh, which is making me a little bit nervous. But one, when I was investigating this, somebody said if you press break a few times and then control G, you should be able to hear a beep from the speaker. And it's very, very quiet. I'll just take my mic off and put it down next to the speaker. But it's there, it's working, it's running. And at least some of the keyboard is working. I think this keyboard does have some issues. So we've got a working machine. Now I just need to connect it up to HDMI. Now this PL4 here, this is a little 10 pin header. And it does have a pin one designation there. There's, so I'm gonna assume it goes in that way around, but I'm gonna check it first. Before I uh, before I explode anything, right? I've, it looks like I've connected that up right. Right, so I've got the I've got the connector pushed in. Um, I had a look, and Dave sent me some pictures of uh, of this in action, and yeah, the, the cable is oriented the same way as his. So let's just turn that on and see if the Pi lights up. Pulling a bit more amperage. I can't see any, oh, there is a light on the Pi. And there's a light on this as well. See that? All right. Well, so all I need to do now, I'm assuming, let's turn that off, is get, uh, a HDMI cable and I just happen to have just bought one extra long one <laughs> and I've just realized I don't need to use that because <laughs> I've got one on my microscope right in front of me Let's see if that works oh well there's something there <laughs> And that's the screen capture button. Hmm. <laughs> it was because it was laying on its keyboard. Right. Okay, I'm gonna I'm get this set up in a slightly safer manner. <laughs> right, <laughs> let's try this again. So I've got the RGB to HDMI is hanging off of the um, uh, HDMI cable over here and the power lead is here also. And that should give me, oh, it's doing the same thing it did a minute ago. Resetting it. I wonder what made it have a change of heart. Well, we saw it working. Hmm. I'm glad we saw it that it was working. 
Oh, well, I've got something to um, I've got something to fix then, <laughs> I think. Hmm. Wonder if moving the computer, it wasn't just moving the keyboard that, that caused things to. Well, that's quite unusual. <laughs> uh, it's not current limiting, it's pulling 1.8 amps now. Which is quite a lot. I wonder if the Pi needs power externally. It shouldn't do though. But yeah, that's given me something to have a play with. Thank you very much, David. Uh, I really appreciate your kind gift. The other thing that he sent me uh, was this um, schematic for, uh, I think, it's, yes, this is the Atomic, or well, Atom MMC3. Um, Atom MMC3 by Charlie Robson and it's basically an SD to an MMC or SD card uh, loader for the Acorn Atom. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to pass this on to clever people and see if we can get PCB made up of this so that I can make uh, so that I can make a an SD card reader for the Acorn Atom so I can load software on it. Um, something way, way outside my pay grade, but I know, I know someone who uh, will probably relish the chance. So I'll, uh, I'll continue to have a little play around with this, but having a, a HDMI output on it is definitely something that's going to be very useful. And I can use my new 3D printer to make a nice case for this. There's probably already one out there. It's got some lovely big mounting holes as well. So that'll be a, a quite a nice, easy thing to, to uh, put together. Lovely. Thank you very much, Dave. I really appreciate it. It's a very kind gift and it will get some use here. Cheers.